in a quest to combat climate change, Zambia Climate Change Network ZCCN met with different stakeholders to review the presentation of the National Determined Contribution NDC for Zambia to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change with the objective to reduce total emission. The deliberation on NDC, which took place at Lusaka Cresta Govu for two days, engaged climate change for justice, Caritas Zambia, Pelham, ZCCN, among others. However, as government is expected to enact climate change bill, revisions and recommendations by CSOs on mitigations and adaptation remains key toward the goal of fighting climate change. During the review and presentation, ZCCN Chairperson Monica Chundama commended the stakeholders for their consistence and inputs toward the NDC. Zambia is a member of the UNFCC, but in 2015, when the Paris Agreement was signed, they submitted what is called a nationally determined contribution. And as you may be aware, this is a national process. So we as civil society feel that we should contribute to this process the best way we can. And this is why we're having a meeting today. We're looking at Zambia's NDCs and the actions that it has committed itself to and looking at areas or ways in, in terms of how uh, the country can strengthen its NDC so that it's meaningful in terms of mitigation actions but as well as has impact in terms of strengthening adaptations actions. Um, we as a country have prioritized adaptation because it's um, closely linked to the livelihood of our communities. Traditional leaders um, being figureheads in the communities, I think should take it upon themselves to, to understand what climate change is all about and how it impacts communities. And those of us who have uh, some knowledge in terms of how these processes are actually occurring, I think um, would make a difference if we link up with community leaders because they are influential people within their communities and communities listen to them. Meanwhile, different key stakeholders had this to say on how climate change can be kept with its effect to both the agriculture and the energy sector. Uh, to understand uh, uh, how a country is able to reduce the emission of carbon, we need to understand on uh, the major contents what is causing the emission, especially in the energy sector. So in Zambia, according to the description of the energy sector, we rely on uh, uh, combustion. Okay? So that's where the, most of the sources of uh, emissions in the energy sector comes from. So the, the, the use of uh, petroleum and oil products is, is in almost broadly in all other sectors, okay, which is cut, uh, it, it cuts across other sectors. So mainly when, you, when we talk about uh, cons uh, combustion, we are looking at sectors like transport sector, we are looking at uh, construction and industry, we are looking at uh, household and commercial duties, and we are also looking at uh, uh, just the usage of the fuel itself in itself as the major source where we can emit uh, carbon. So to reduce the carbon footprint, so the greenhouse gas emissions from the energy sector, uh, the direction of the country is that we produce around 2.5%, which is the second uh, after <coughs> land use in terms of uh, emissions as a country. So for us to be able to reduce uh, emissions as a country, in line with the nationally determined contributions uh, according to the Paris Agreement. It means we have to, as a country, we have, we have aligned ourselves to contribute around uh, 30,000 uh, greenhouse gas equivalent or carbon equivalent greenhouse gas emissions. So by that is by the year 2030. So for us to be able to reduce, we need to identify areas in all these sectors that we can able to deploy mitigative and adaptative measures to, to be able to reduce the, the, the emissions. A lot of degradation that is taking place in terms of land degradation, and uh, especially with, uh, compounded with climate change. 
we've, we've, really, we've seen that there's a lot of change in terms of land use from agricultural, some of the land is now going into mining and uh, other industrial development, which of course is being done by investors. But to the small scale farmers, we are saying they should continue using the land sustainably. Where possible, do a lot of water harvesting. There are a lot of water harvesting, water harvesting technologies that are found. And then if they're doing their agricultural cropping system, I think they should uh, make sure that the land is covered at all times, either by dead mulch or by live mulch. And then we're also looking at uh, if they're doing animal production, they should stock the animals at the appropriate stocking rates. I think the issue here is not the seed destroying the land, but I think it is the seeds that come with a package associated with them. For example, if you buy a hybrid seed, you are told you have to use certain number of uh, fertilizer bags, you are supposed to use certain number of herbicides and all those things. So we are saying, let us look at trying to revert back to our local indigenous seeds, which do little, which do need little or no of those uh, uh, synthetic or non-biodegradable pesticides or chemicals, because those ones have got a very bad effect on the soil and in the environment. If you take, for example, now we are seeing bees are getting to a verge of getting extinct here in town because of the chemicals that we are using. So we are saying let's use seed that does well with little or minimum usage of chemicals. Local seed varieties can do that. With the NDC focus on strategic productive systems such as agriculture, wildlife and energy, both from mitigation and adaptation component, the hope is to see government enact the bill and consider recommendations from various CSOs whose goal is to fight climate change. Jason Bubala, ZTV News, Lusaka.